So I know it rained last night and all the trails around here are closed today, but uh, I didn't think a tornado came through. I mean, that's just an atrocity. What in the heck has been going on here? It's nuts. Today we're gonna do something fun. I'm gonna weigh my 2019 Bronson. I'm gonna weigh my 2018 5010. And I'll show you what the, uh, what the weight difference is between those two. And then also, I'll tell you two things that I have changed on my 2019 Bronson. Stay tuned and I'll tell you what those are. I use my uh, park tool stand and uh, digital scale. And you can probably tell the Bronson's not new anymore. I've been, uh, I've been riding it all for the last week and a half, just almost every day. I'm just trying to, uh, to give some initial impressions to you guys on how I thought it was. I haven't got a chance to put it through the super rough stuff yet, but uh, I did definitely take it to some skills areas that have uh, three and a half, four foot drops, uh, some much bigger jumps, and uh, I was just pretty impressed with it. Uh, so let's get to doing this. We've got the Bronson on the scales. All right, let's see if we can get it to settle down here. So about 31 pounds, nine ounces is fluctuating. Oh, it just settled down. 31 pounds, eight ounces. And uh, this is not a stock S build frame. And I'll tell you about what I've actually changed on this uh, in a bit. For those of you in the metric nations, about 14.32 kilograms kilograms all right let's put the 5010 up all right so we have the uh the 5010 up and remember this is an aluminum uh, frame so i built it up and we're at 30 pounds 13 ounces 13.99 kilograms for the 5010. All right, so uh, so remember earlier I was talking about there's two things on this bike that I changed out. I think would uh, makes this bike almost. I, to be honest with you, I don't think I'm going to actually ride the 5010 anymore. I probably will end up selling it, recoup some of the money, and just keep keep the Bronson. To be honest with you, because. My first initial impressions of just basic trail riding around here, I can't really tell the difference in pedaling around. As a matter of fact, the seat tube angle on the Bronson to me is, um, it just feels a little bit more comfortable. So yeah, so let's talk about what I've changed on this thing. The first thing I changed is um, my dropper post. And I'm running a 9.8 fall line, 150 millimeter travel dropper post. Um, Fall line is my go-to dropper post. It's cable actuated with a with a mechanical brake, and they're just so simple to rebuild. They're so simple to just change a cable on if you need to do a field some field maintenance. Um, and I got to be honest with you, as soon as I unbox this bike and uh, was playing around with the uh, the Rock Shocks um, reverb here, uh, there was. A kink in the hydraulic hose and I'm not sure if it was there on installation or what happened so I'm not gonna ding rock shocks on this but I think one thing that uh, could be a determining factor obviously as this um, hydraulic cable is actually run through the other side of the, the down tube it has to come up through these very narrow goes through and so this is kind of the, what they call the channel um, or the shock tunnel or the shunnel uh, and I think it got kinked in here somewhere because uh, when I pulled it out, the cable was definitely bent. I actually cut that piece out and uh, it, uh, whenever I would undo the seat clamp and actually pull the seat post up and out, it seemed like the kink would go away and uh, it would work okay. But I gotta be honest with you, I just I just fell back to the uh, what I know works. Um, so I may, either end up selling the, the reverb or keep it, but I'm not keen on hydraulics uh, for my dropper post right now. It just, just doesn't seem to be too much of a proven technology. I did hear that there's a couple of manufacturers now that are making bleedless 
um, hydraulic dropper post but for now I'm sticking with my 9.8 it works beautifully the access to the air um, with the seat rail mount here is just brilliant uh, in my mind you just loosen one side up flip the seat up um, so it's pretty simple so that was the first thing I changed the second thing I changed is obviously the wheel set um, this is the enduro 305 wheel set from i9 and uh, and these wheels are beefy man they feel like you're riding on carbon wheels to be honest with you uh, but i changed these out for a reason um, and mainly it was the hubs not necessarily the wheels so these are the industry nine torch hubs they have super high engagement on them look at this i mean look at you don't have to move that pedal far before it engages um, so that was really cool now what came off of this is a set of race face AR with some DT Swiss 370s and I'll show these to you but uh, this is what came off I put these these are basically brand new put these back in the plastic uh, these DT3 uh, DT Swiss 370s although while they're a good budget build uh, wheel and probably you know good enough for a lot of folks that don't notice the uh, the engagement difference you know I'd say these are good and these um, these are actually the offset Let me pull back the bag real quick hard to hold the camera dude all right so these are actually the race face AR offset um, yeah go ahead and fall calm down calm down all right, so these are the race face AR. And these are asymmetrical. You can see the uh, the spoke. Let's see if I can get some light. Some good light. So yeah, so you can see um, the, uh, the spokes are actually offset over to the left side over there to make, to uh, account for all the stuff that gets mounted up on the right side there like you're rotor and the set and everything so you can see the, the nipples there are much closer to this edge and the art of that edge and these wheels actually felt really really stiff um, so I think they would have been really good probably just mounted to some different hubs maybe some DT Swiss 350s or 240s or even the torch probably looking back at it if I had to do the order all over again and remember this was the uh, S-Build Carbon C um, from Santa Cruz. Probably looking back at it, I would have just ordered uh, the Santa Cruz wheels with, uh, you can build them up with a variety of hubs from their website and they have the i9 torches available, so I probably would do that. But uh, I'll end up selling these and recouping some money from this and putting it on another project, but uh, not super high engagement for DT Swiss 370. They're just uh, budget uh, hubs and if you're used to that high engagement you're just not going to be satisfied um, i did ride them i mean they rode, they rode perfect but um, i'm so used to to almost instantaneously engagement when i go to pedal and for me i'm really keen on the sounds the bikes make and uh, when you're when you're when you're pedaling and you don't get immediate engagement there's a bit of that free time there where your your torque all your torque goes into just literally no um back forth and it just makes this clang sound when it does catch um, and it's quite noticeable uh, riding too because if you're uh, trying to inch your way up some rock gardens or whatever um, and just doing the uh, kind of what I call quarter pedaling or half pedaling it makes a difference but uh, you know for the folks that don't matter about that these are probably pretty good uh, hubs I would imagine DT Swiss always, always has made good hubs and wheels so there we go all right, so there's the uh, the weight comparison between the aluminum 5010 and the Bronson CS build with the two changes that I said uh, made this bike much better, which were the i9 hubs and Endura 305 wheels. These have a, uh, obviously you can tell by the name, the internal width of the, uh, the, the, uh, the rim is actually 30.5 millimeters. So they do make for a rather flat profile on the tire seem to catch really good and um, 
the other thing too is I put my wolf tooth uh, remote. All right, I don't know if we'll, we'll catch this in the light. So the other thing too, instead of the uh, basic 9.8 thumb remote, I put the uh, the wolf tooth uh, light action remote on. At first, I was kind of concerned about the bare cable there, but it seems to have to be not too much of a problem. It's not super muddy or wet around here, but uh, that was the the other change I made in conjunction with the 9.8 dropper post. All right, let's do some initial impressions. First of all, um, I was kind of concerned about the SRAM uh, brakes. I've always uh, run Shimano on my other bikes and uh, concerned that the uh, they wouldn't hold. Got to be honest with you, they have better modulation uh, than the Shimano's. Um, but that also can fool you a little bit too because you have to pull the lever more uh, to get the same bite. And um, I don't know how that will fare in the in the super in the steep downhill stuff. I've yet to to take those out. Um, but these are the the code uh, brakes, SRAM code brakes. Um, but you know we shall see. Um, 203 millimeter rotor on the front and 180 on the back, so they're pretty beefy. Uh, as far as rotor size there so you know so far I've been pretty impressed with them I'm not gonna remove them I have XTR brakes on the other bike um, and uh, you know I like both brakes but um, definitely the bike points are different and the modulation is different I noticed that right away when I started wheeling um, and when you start to get to a point where you may tip over in the back and you want to grab for just a little bit of that back brake. I actually had to grab a second time on on the SRAM here to uh, keep from going uh, back uh, too far just because I wasn't used to it yet but uh, now that I'm used to it it's much uh, much easier. So you've already heard my initial impressions of the um, of the, I, the DT Swiss 370 hubs and the uh, Raceface AR offset wheels. I think they're great wheels. They felt really stiff, but like I said, points of engagement was key, so I ended up swapping those out. Uh, the other initial impression, uh, the um, Performance Front Fork 36. Um, can't really notice a whole lot of difference um, with the riding I've been doing between the dampers and the two yet. Um, I have the Fox Factory 36 on the 5010. Um, has a different damper in it. Um, has the Kashima coating. Can't really notice much. I do notice some stiction uh, when I first get on this bike, when it first tries to go down into travel after it's been sitting for a bit. But other than that, um, it's uh, it's been performing solidly. Um, but then again, I've only been in uh, you know trails around here, and I haven't been to the mountains yet to to really kind of ring that out. The other thing I said you know I was concerned about was you know with this new tunnel, there's only pretty much one maybe two shocks rear shocks that actually fit on this um, since one end is actually bearing mounted and the other end is bushing mounted um, i think they went with this rock shock super deluxe um, i think this is a super deluxe r model um, but so far i've been i'm quite pleased with it i will say i've been running stiff uh stiff fork and a stiff shock with air pressure just because the what I've been doing lately is just kind of trying to practice in my uh, my jumping skills and trying to learn how to whip and all that kind of stuff so I just kind of um, stiffen it up now how that will perform how these will perform in the mountains on the, the steeper downhill stuff is yet to be determined but I will definitely do that at some point in time I'm probably coming up in late summer or fall time um, but yeah so far so good I think uh, um, the, the other thing I did swap out was uh, if you'll notice here the XO I've got the XO shifter and the XO derailleur that was not stock on the carbon CS build um, I took those off of this bike uh, my 5010 and then I swapped the GX Eagles back over to this one uh, you can see here um, I like the shift lever the best on the GX Eagle because it has a little bit of cross hatch and you can actually feel it. Uh, whereas on the X0, on the XO, 
it's less obvious and you can't really feel the, the cross hatch on it at all. It's, uh, it seems to be more etched on that. So those were the changes that I made. Um, so there might be a little bit of weight savings in that. Um, but I really like the shift feel of the X0 compared to the Eagle. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I could change the levers or not. That may be possible. I may look into doing that because I really do like the lever on the Eagle better. Um, but uh, so yeah, so far so good. Um, you'll notice I put my front fender on. This is the all mountain style and this is the camo version, which I think goes really well with this bike. It's just so dirty right now. It's hard to tell. Um, so that's the other thing I've added. And uh, yeah, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. That's kind of my first initial impressions of just some basic riding and jumping I've been doing around the local trails here. Um, stay tuned. I actually uh, post some rides, um, not just from trails around here, but hopefully moving uh, a little bit further out west and do some of the downhill sections in the mountains. And I'll post a review after that. So yeah, you know what to do. Until next time, skill up and ride.